to launch, Bluegrass. Stand in by. Release. Welcome back to Retro Wednesday here at the Titanium Hangar. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about the Silver Hawks Mirage. Now, this is the flagship vehicle of the Kenner Silverhawks line, and I'm going to go over this, go over the features, and talk about this, but then I want to get into talking about Super 7, how they've sort of alluded to, Brian's alluded to, making this in the ultimate scale. Once we get the Thunder tank out, and then there's another big thing for Thundercats, then this, possibly. So we're going to talk about this, and we're going to talk about more, coming up. Okay, so first off, I want to just get into talking about the overall aesthetic of this. I think this is actually one of, if not the coolest vehicle ever made for a vintage toy line. It seats five figures, and of course, you can perch your birds up there also. And it has a couple of action features, but just the look of it, the aesthetic of it makes it look awesome. This is one of those vehicles that looks amazing from every single angle. And, and the funny thing is, I just never realized they made it back in the day. I wasn't into Silverhawks so much as a kid, but as an adult, I think it's a really fun toy line to display and to look at. But this vehicle itself, though, has impressed me. It's one of those things that I didn't want to go much past the figures until I saw this. And I was like, oh, they made the Mirage. That thing is just awesome. So we're going to get into looking at this. I'm going to do a quick... Features lightning round. I like to do that when I review vehicles. Then I'm going to get into each one of the features coming up. Features of the Mirage include ejectable hot seat. Realistic firing bird-like missiles. Opening, closing, and staying open cockpits. Canopies. Mounts for all of your favorite birds. Realistic rear engine thrusters. Rubbery rear stabilizer wings. Lowering handle so you can take the fun in your own hand. One touch wing deployment and ejection. Realistic control panel decals. Realistic driver seat in the cockpit. And the greatest feature you cannot put a price on, fun. Okay, so getting to looking at each of these, I've got to admit that mine is not in the greatest condition. I mean, there's several out there in better shape. I got mine for 100 bucks, but I was missing some parts. It probably cost me another 100 bucks in parts over a couple of years. But I'm happy to have one that's complete and original, and I'll just take it for the way it is. Uh, these things are getting kind of pricey on the secondary market, but I am happy to have it in the condition it is. So let's get in and go through all of these features. First off, you can perch your birds up here, which is kind of cool. It's kind of fun. And I did have a lot of trouble getting Tallyhawk to stick up there. I don't know why. And then Razor is wanting to aim downward, but the rest of them seem to be kind of okay to get on there. And then getting into the next feature, this launching is kind of like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I did lube mine prior to this. I don't know how many attempts it's going to take before it works, but you just kind of push it in there and then it should come out. It worked during the lightning round, but there, well, it's supposed to spring across there like so. Now, this little piece here itself is kind of cool. Now, in the show and in the movie and what I think Super 7 would do is it has the wings that would fold down from here. And I do have paint from like four projects I'm working on right now, restorations of vintage stuff, but... Uh, and then you can look inside there. It's kind of cool. Now you do fit bluegrass. It really doesn't fit very well with his hat. With his hat, it's kind of wanting to push this up and that doesn't look quite right the way that works, but I, I'm forcing it anyway because I want him to have his hat on in there. I don't know. It's just a, a me thing. And a lot of times I see these have breaks in the cockpits and canopies and those kinds of things. So uh, it was kind of hard to get a good canopy and then this does have some stickers on it It does have this real wheel right here and a wheel up here and then a rubbery nose up front which that should not have been rubbery i think it's because uh safety not because they wanted it to last because they wanted if this hits somebody if it shoots off and hits someone it's rubbery and it doesn't just like you know shoot your eye out you'll shoot your eye out that was the 80s were the era of you'll shoot your eye out so that little piece there that's kind of fun we're going to slide that back in we're going to look at some other stuff over here, uh, I'm going to open this canopy up, and as you can see, it has a clicking clicking to it, so it clicks. And then 
if you put a figure in there in with their wings down position, but I don't have the wings on any of these. These are all my beater figures, by the way. I'm not putting any good figures in here, scratching them up. I'm not going to risk that. But you push this orange button on the side, and it just pushes the leg in, depresses the leg so that you get the pop-up feature that you normally get. And that's kind of cool. And then, of course, it's hard to get the angle, but we've got some stickers in here. And there we go. My stickers, again, not the greatest condition, but I was just kind of happy to have one of these. And I still think it's one of the coolest vehicles. So, of course, if they make a an Ultimates version, I'm in on it. But I do think it's a cool vehicle. And really, mostly for display. I mean, not for play, but for display. And then let's move back here to see what we got going on with these. Uh, now we don't have the the push button army jet kind of thing going on right there so that's a thing that's not a thing on the inside ones just on the outside ones getting back here in the back now we do have stickers and I'm not sure I think I might have that sticker on upside down I think I do anyway uh, stickers on the outside sticker right here for thrusters and that stuff and then I can't seem to get these to go up they're supposed to go up mine are kind of sagging a little bit I'm just glad I've seen these uh, just completely decimated like it's rubbery and the rubber doesn't hold up over time and so it just kind of breaks down and especially under heat and uh, Terrible storage and that kind of stuff now with this uh, Firing mechanism here's the button to fire the missiles and the missiles I actually thought were supposed to go to something mask when I was collecting mask and and like uh, 2010 11 12 something like that. It was crazy now you push the button here and it goes firing and it fires really well and it's the same on each side and so with that I think appears to be the same on each side because I haven't really had any problem putting them in either direction on either side so yeah there's that and then of course I don't really think we need to really go into the handle but I guess we will on the bottom of this I find that when you have this in here there's like a little gap right here it just doesn't quite fit right now. I'm not sure. I think that's because it has a wheel. So the wheel has to clear that when it comes out. So I think that's why. And which is kind of strange because now we have a wheel here, but not a wheel anywhere else on the bottom of this thing. So that's kind of strange. Now you pull this handle down and then it clicks into place and you can hold it and you can fly it around and do whatever. Kind of like uh, you can do with a lot of other vehicles out there in the 80s. And then when you go to put the handle back, it just makes a loud really it just feels like you're gonna break it every time that's why i didn't really want to do that but i think you fold it back in there but yeah there's the features of this wonderful mirage but uh, i think it's time to get into some comparisons so when i compare it to some stuff that i think people know what it scales to because i don't think a lot of people have a mirage in their collection I don't think a lot of people understand the scale of this thing. It's a pretty good size. It's not huge, but it's pretty good size. But this is an AWE Striker. Whether you have a vintage one or you have one of the Walmart reissues, pretty much everybody has an idea of what an AWE Striker looks like or how big it is. So there's that. Now here it is next to the G.I. Joe Well, and I'm going to have to go shaky cam on this just a bit so you can see. But uh, about the same footprint, just a different shape. And that's how big it is. Like if you've got a whale, Everyone probably thinks the whale is huge, which it is a pretty good sized vehicle. But this is about the same length, maybe a little bit longer than the whale, a little bit wider. But of course, there's not as much bulk to it as there is with the G.I. Joe whale. Here it is next to the Sky Runner with good old Monstar. And as you can see, Sky Runner is almost as long as it, about the same length because all these tentacles, they're just really long. I was surprised to see how long these tentacles were when I got this thing. And I've been working on restoring that. I still need a missile. Probably some stickers. I, I don't know. I don't know what more I need to make that thing satisfy me. But uh, of course, I got these cheap. You know, I got this thing for about 100. Probably have 200 in it. I got this thing for like 120. And so with that, like I'm not paying these insane prices. So, so they're not going to be as good as some of the other ones that are out there. And there it is in comparison with the Sprint Hawk. The Sprint Hawk is actually a relatively new acquisition of mine. It's another one that I got real cheap. And so I'm going to probably take a quick look at that since I don't think it really deserves its own video. So I'll have it in here and then we'll go into talking about what I think of the Super 7 Mirage for Ultimates if they make it. I don't really think a Sprint Hawk deserves its own video. So we're just going to take a quick look at this. And so it does have stickers. Oh, mine's missing stickers. So there should be some stickers, I think, right on the side of this or something. I'm not really sure. If somebody makes repros, I might pick set up to deck it out and dial it out. But uh, there are... The canopy opens, there are stickers inside there, and of course this is where you'd put whatever characters right in it. Usually I remember seeing Quicksilver in it. 
And then uh, this is not very expensive by itself. You do have a perch right here uh, that you can perch Tallyhawk. And then I'm just gonna put a Quicksilver in here real fast, just for fun. And then you can kind of see how it looks with the figure in it. So more of a laying down position than a seating position for these figures. So this is absolutely terrible to put a figure in that his arms pop up because there's not enough room for the legs to be spread out properly. So it, it forces them in and then they pop out. So that kind of sucks. But okay, so there's a button back here. You push the button and it pops the wings out, which that's the coolest feature that this thing has. It's kind of cool. And then the expensive part is this stupid little missile. And you push this button and the missile fires. And that is pretty much everything to this vehicle, which is why it doesn't need its own video. Okay, now for my favorite part of these types of videos and the speculation for the future. What do you expect? What do I expect? Well, I actually expect that what we got with the Thunder Tank was a big, realistic sized version of the Thunder Tank. Now, saying realistic as in it matches the cartoon, it's accurate to the perspective from the characters and the figures. So it's what we should have gotten as a kid. Of course, it's $500. dollars i think this thing will be every bit of $500. Maybe we're lucky and they figure out a way to make it like $400. That would be awesome. And the Thunder Tank's not selling as well as they thought it would. And, and, and they say there's less Silverhawks collectors than Thundercat collectors, and there's less Thundercat collectors than He-Man Motu collectors. So, with that, I do have a picture that I'm showing of the cartoon accurate version of this vehicle. Now, the thing about that is that this cartoon shows that you have the inside ports really close, so the inside canopies or uh, close to the cockpit and then the outside ones are way way far out like much further out than what you see on the toy the toy is a compromise I guess you could say or the cartoon is a stylized version of a, an artist rendition so I think that they would figure out a way to make it look more like the cartoon I don't think it look exactly like the cartoon I think it'll be a mixture of between the cartoon and the Kenner toy so it's not gonna be exactly cartoon somewhere in the middle and because you have to make it a real product. And with that, this thing as a cartoon, this thing would be huge, like massively huge, like at least double the size. I don't think it needs to be double the size. I think it needs to be about 60% bigger. And I think it should look like a cross between the two. And so with that, what did Brian Flynn say? He said that we have something big coming for Silverhawk collectors, but we have to get the Thunder Tank in your hands first. You're gonna get excited for that. We have something big for, for Thundercats collectors and then something big for the Silverhawks collectors. So he alluded to basically this. So uh, I'm curious what you think in the comments below. So on this Retro Wednesday, I hope you had fun looking at the Silverhawks Mirage with me. I hope you spell it right. M-I-R-A-J, <laughs> Mirage. Uh, and I've seen it spelled every which way, but you look at the box and that's how I know that's what they spell it with J. Uh, that's where I got the features and would, when I look at these, I usually do look at the boxes to see what the box says and usually look at instructions to see how they word things because that's kind of fun too. So, Anyway, do you have one of these Mirages? Are you excited for a possible Super 7 Ultimates one? Would you get one for Super 7 Ultimates if they made one? Or do you think that Super 7 is really running into licensing issues and once that last wave that they've announced comes out, they're done? I mean, we got wave four. We don't know what it is. So let me know in the comments below, like and subscribe to Dave Hanger out. You want to go after him, Quicksilver? No, we've got to free Lord Cash and find out what's happened on Dolar. All right, you're the trail boss. Oh, boy, I feel like I've been thrown by a spooky bronc.